Hello, everybody. Praise be to God. We are broadcasting from Dallas. And I want to clarify a few things from my last tape, because near the end, I kind of got a little distracted by all these phone calls that were coming in. And so I needed to make a few corrections when I was talking about the uh, power of the number seven. Uh, the emphasis, of course, is on God's spirit. Seven is magnified. It's the perfect number. It's uh, like the perfect order you have uh, on the seventh day. It's a day of rest. The uh, It's a time of provision and faith. The Israelites in the wilderness, they got double portions on the seventh day. Of course, with Leah and Rachel, for some reason I may have said Rebecca, Leah and Rachel, they uh, Jacob had to work seven years for each of them. And then in between was the seven days of uh, the wedding where you... Uh, you celebrate time with your wife. So it's three sevens right in a row. But sevens appear throughout the Word of God. Uh, you have in the book of Revelation, you have the seven lampstands, the seven churches, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls, the seven angels. It's really powerful how God utilizes the number seven. And that's why whenever you see the number seven, you should take special attention. And so in 2017, something really special happened, and that was the great sign of Revelation 12. Now, you may have not heard about it, or maybe someone mentioned it in a negative way, because Satan was trying to destroy its credibility by talking about Nibiru and Planet X. That was the pagan world system. And so a lot of Christians got confused. Pastors got confused. Uh, astronomers got confused because they were talking about this, okay, this planet behind the sun doesn't exist. So therefore, it's all a bunch of baloney. But no, no, this is God's sign. It had nothing to do with Planet X, nothing to do with Nibiru. It was not a catastrophe. It was a warning. It's a sign. It's called the great sign for a reason. There are many reasons why it's called a great sign. Number one is because God gave it to John, the apostle. Jesus Christ gave it directly to him. It's right in the center of the book of Revelation, the most important prophetic book in the Bible. And it's the very first verse of that chapter. And it's connected to Satan, and it's connected to the remnant of Israel. And it's connected to Jesus Christ in many other ways and to Israel. So it's the great sign. Plus, it leads to all the other signs in modern time leading up to the end. And it's going to be really interesting to explore all this. In the first video, I did. I went into quite a bit of this, explaining to you, the listener, how everything moved into place in the cosmos, you had the 400 days where both Venus and Jupiter traveled in conjunction, in union, across the solar uh, system and came to rest in the womb of Virgo, which is the uh, main part of the sign. In fact, the great sign is often called the sign of the woman. For that reason, because Virgo is at the center. Leo the lion forms the crown around her head, the crown of lights. And then the sun is on her shoulder and the moon at her feet. And the verse goes like this. And there appeared a great sign, a woman dressed with the sun, the moon at her feet, and a garland of 12 stars. Now are 12 lights. There are only nine major lights in Leo. So three planets move into place, and they move into an amazing order. 
Venus that had traveled with Jupiter has now exited the womb and is in line with Mars and Mercury. And this happens approximately nine months later because Jupiter stays in the womb for nine months, over nine months, which is the time of gestation. And by the way, this has never happened in star or celestial map history. Uh, one time when it did come close, uh, matched somewhat uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. That was the Bethlehem star. It's a little different configuration. It didn't have those three in a, in a row, but it had a scepter. Because as was prophesied, uh, that uh, the Lord would be part of a Davidic scepter and then the line of David and therefore you have Judah involved and therefore the line of Judah. So the woman can be Mary, the woman can be Virgo or, or Eve. Uh, because it's Virgo's virgin. So if Mary, then uh, the, the Leo, the lion, makes sense being the lion of Judah. Because Mary is the key to the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, the woman is in pain of having birth. So... Uh, the Spirit of God entered Mary, and Mary conceived the child, Jesus Christ. So that's how Jesus fits into the picture in a very strong way. But the verse that explains the birth speaks also of this child being in danger of being devoured by the serpent dragon. And right below this sign, when it appears, is Hydra, the serpent dragon. So the dragon awaits the birth. So this sign ha involves three constellations. And I didn't mention that in the first one because I wanted to emphasize other things. But we can see that this is a message of warning because there's an interesting dichotomy that happens in the verse related to the birth. It talks of the child that is under the threat of being devoured, but the child is rapturo, is raptured away, is saved. Now, Jesus Christ never was in danger of Satan and the serpent. He uh, was much greater than Satan, and uh, in his ascension, which the Catholic Church likes to say that that refers to his ascension. No, never was he in danger, especially at the ascension, because he was in a glorified state, and he had uh, been with the, the uh, 500 and many more for 50 days. That was Pentecost, when the ascension happened, and... Uh, it's a kind of important, that moment, when he rises into the clouds, the uh, apostles are saying, whoa, you know, what's going on? And looking up, and the angels say, why do you look up? He will return the same way that he rose up. So we know from that verse alone that the Lord is coming back in the form of a rapture. Because when he comes back in the second coming, he doesn't come back in the clouds, so to speak. He, he comes back with the saints on a, he comes back on a white horse as a conqueror and he sets foot on the Mount of Olives, a totally different situation. So we know that that is referring to the rapture. So now we go back to the sign of Revelation 12. At the foot is the moon and some people believe that the moon represents Rachel. Remember Rachel uh, in Jeremiah 33, it talks about rape, Rachel weeping because of all the babies that were slain. Well, that's interesting, right? And Mary, um, Rachel was buried in Bethlehem, 
So it makes sense. And that is connecting Israel, which uh, the same people that believe Rachel is the moon believe that Israel is the woman. After all, it was Israel that gave birth to Jesus Christ. So that is an interesting thought. And that again goes back to the past. But then you have Virgo that I mentioned earlier. And Virgo, uh, uh, or uh, Eve, uh, she was there in the garden with Adam and the serpent when God spoke to the serpent and said, look, <laughs> your seed will strike her seed and her seed will crush the head of your seed. And that is a prophecy given by God right at the beginning of time. Chapter 3 of Genesis 3.15 saying basically that at the end and maybe even sooner because it did partially happen on the cross. Jesus defeated Satan. But we know that Satan is alive and well in, in a sense that he is uh, going to enter the Antichrist. He was the accuser of the saints. But Revelation 12 is interesting because it talks about a war in heaven. And when it does, it says then, the word then, after the child is uh, born, it says then. And it says... So you remember that, oh, I wanted to mention that the child is also the church. Jesus is in the church, and the church is in Jesus. And it's kind of like a lot of verses in the Bible that span a great amount of time. In other words, you can start with a verse. Even Jesus did that. He spoke about setting the captives free and opening the eyes of the blind. And um, then he skip to the rest of the verse that talks about way in the future. Well, that's the same thing with this verse. Jesus is again, he's telling the Apostle John that this child will be raptured, and that's the church, because Jesus was not raptured. So the serpent is waiting to destroy the church, and that's what's happening now. Satan is pursuing the church. He is now cast down from heaven. He and his angels have been cast there was a war in heaven as described in, um, in the next paragraph in Revelation 12. It describes how Satan and his angels are cast down and Satan is furious because his time is short. If Satan was cast down at the beginning of time, his time would not be short. Likewise, uh, the great sign would not have been important because what would it mean? Why have the great sign when there's nobody around to see it except for Adam and Eve. That is absurd. And people that, that suggest that have not really studied the book of Revelation. Nor are the people who say that the book of Revelation is totally in chronological order. There's no way it can be because of Revelation 12. Satan cannot be cast down after chapter 11. Because chapter 11 is when the two witnesses are killed. And they're killed by the Antichrist, and Satan has entered the Antichrist. Satan is the one who's motivated the Antichrist to kill the two witnesses. So, and plus, you have, you would have uh, Satan in heaven when the rapture occurred. Why would God rapture the church when Satan was still in heaven? So the point is, Satan was cast down. And I believe it was cast down in 2017, September 23rd, when the great sign happened. That is why it is such a significant year. That year in the Jewish and the Hebrew calendar is the year 5777. Incredibly important. Um, and uh, so Satan is cast. And many other things happen on that year or that date of September 23rd. That was the end of the Jubilee year, the 50-year period. And the 50-year period started in 1967, which was incredibly important. That is when Jerusalem was set free from um, the control of Islamic 
the Jordanians and other Islamic uh, forces. And you go back 70 years, and it's the birth of Israel, an extremely significant number and, and year. Uh, 70 is also a, a very holy number because it's perfect order. You have the number 7, and you have it times 10. 10 is purification. Uh, it's God's uh, perfect time for holiness and cleansiness and uh, and re uh, repentance. So what you have basically is Israel. God is giving grace to Israel and giving her a land in order to be birthed in. And that actually begins the prophetic generation, which would end after 70 years in 2017. But I believe because of a special other number, the number eight, which means new beginnings, number eight is pretty much everywhere when you look at the, the years and you look at the events. This year, for instance, is the year 5784. 5784. Five is a number of grace. The whole thousand years is the year of grace, God's grace. God has been very patient with the church and showing his grace and bringing people in to his church. So that's probably why it begins with grace. And then the seven we already spoke about, but then the eight, if you look at eight zero, for instance, eight zero is a very powerful number in terms of new beginnings. God has new beginnings for not only the nation of Israel, but the whole world. And that's why it's a, a decade. And some people believe it has uh, meaning related to voice, to speaking. In other words, those uh, Hebrew scholars, they say that the number eight relates to the mouth. And it makes sense, too, because that's the witnessing. We witness for those 80 years as God's grace is being meted out. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, it's also a time God is telling us right now that we need to share the gospel. But there's also another darker side to the number eight, and that is the, the amount of lies and deception that are occurring, uh, kind of a pre... Oh, it's a foreshadowing of the white horse, and we're seeing that happen a lot right now. A tremendous amount of wickedness in, in, in what is being said and what is being declared. And uh, there's a lot of, large amount of hate and slander and, and uh, deceit and lying from the very top. So that all fits into place. And uh, so God has given us an extra 10 years. And so right now we're in 8-4. So it's five, seven, eight, four, and four is the number for door, Dalit. So God has opened the door, and that is part of the door that we just uh, talked about here in 2017. It's like opening Pandora's box. Satan's been cast down to earth, and now he wants to destroy uh, the church and institutions and, and the United States. The United States is, is the one country protecting Israel. We veto. Uh, England is afraid. They, they usually abstain, and so does France. We're the only ones vetoing these declarations that are mean, being made against Israel, uh, trying to force her to uh, uh, withdraw completely from Gaza or all these other crazy ideas when they need to get rid of Hamas. Uh, Hamas... Uh, the massacre that happened on October 7th, and there's another 7. And by the way, October 7th in 2023 was a six-year 
uh, and, and uh, it's when you think back to the great sign and you want to commemorate the great sign the uh, on September 23rd so when you commemorate the great sign on September 23rd that event on October 7th happened exactly two weeks after the commemoration so again you have sevens like warnings like God giving a uh, the Holy Spirit is is giving a warning of the future it's warning us that we are entering a time like the red horse it's a foreshadow of the red horse of the apocalypse and um, you know you have uh, in the next horse you have the famines and you have uh, scarcity of food but remember also the seven was used many times uh, in the case of Joseph, there were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Also, the Shulamite woman, there was seven years of, of famine that would happen soon afterwards. So you see seven being used a lot as judgment. Um, and, you know, there are seven major lights in the heavens that uh, the ancient countries focused on and Israel did too and, uh, and that included all those mentioned the sun moon and stars those uh, well not the stars but the sun moon and um, I wanted to get a little bit into the Mars Mercury and Venus alignment because Mars means man Venus means uh, I think the Holy Spirit or the high priest and Mercury is the message, but they're all pointed at Regulus, which is the brightest star in the sign of Revelation 12. It's a, a massive star, and it's the heart of Leo, or the heart of Judah. So basically, that means royalty. So it's basically describing the, uh, the message and the purpose of who Jesus Christ is. He's the Son of God. He is, uh, was man, he was the messenger, he was the high priest, and he's royal, the King of Kings. And so we have all that, and that would be seven lights within, connected within the sign of Revelation 12. But the seven lights spoken about in ancient time, they don't refer to Regulus, it refers to Saturn. So Saturn is the seventh light that they would follow. But you have these sevens pretty much everywhere in the cosmos and the billboard that God provided and the events throughout history and um, in just uh, other signs that God has provided in our time, like the October 7th event, which is tragic and which is affecting the whole world and will continue to affect the whole world it's like a blindness satan has blinded the world and so uh there is a uh, total lack of humanity even among these people who are protesting they're celebrating in a sense the killing and death of babies and women and older people that were slaughtered 1,000, over 1,200, and then the captives were slaughtered. So there, we don't know how many hostages are left. And all of this happened under the eyes of the United Nations, and they are <laughs> supporting Hamas. It's unfortunate. Uh, all the evidence we have, because they photographed everything, we have films to prove it all. Or Israel does, they have the films. Well, now we want to really get into uh, the other levels related to this sign, and we've discussed some of the generations, but there, there's a couple of others. The 100-year generation goes back to the Balfour Agreement, and that matches up to 2017. And then you have the 500, which is Martin Luther nailing the 95 Theses. I had said 99, but it's 95 Theses on the wall in Wittenberg. And so we have 
and going back in history quite a ways, like God has history timed. He does have a timetable and he is in control. He has set everything up for this time. And it's going to be a time of trial for the church and for the nation of Israel, but it's also a time of redemption. And so God will fulfill all his promises and the prophecies given in the word of God. And that is a reason to read the book of Revelation and to read the Old Testament, because all of these prophecies will be fulfilled uh, word by word. God keeps every promise. And uh, he is not going to tarry. So believe me when I say we do not have much time. 2024 is seven years after the sign of Revelation 12. This is a critical year. Massive things are going to happen. The 9th of August is coming up one of the most tragic days in the history of Israel. The temple was destroyed twice on that day. And then also you have the whole High Holy Days coming up in commemoration of not only September 11th here in America, but also of October 7th in Israel, and also the great sign of Revelation 12, and the Feast of Tabernacles, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Trumpets. All of these are high holy uh, days. Teshuva starts 40 days earlier. It's a time of repentance. I believe something bad's going to happen during that 40 day period. People need to wake up. And it may happen even the month before, which is the ninth of Av. But we have to get ready for whatever is going to happen. And that is only the beginning. Worse things are going to happen as the year follows through. And so uh, we have the election. We're seeing already chaos. That's This type of chaos is only going to get worse. So seek God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And try to find fellowship with Jesus Christ. Pray and meditate on the Word of God. We, I, I also want to tell you that, you know, the Bethlehem star, nobody saw it, right? Only except for the Magi. So the great sign of Revelation 12, that's why you're only hearing it from me, because it wasn't, apparently, it wasn't meant for everybody to see it and recognize it. I just had uh, communication with someone in the Southern Hemisphere that sees everything the way I see it. It's really interesting. There's only one other person that's actually been on the internet anyway to announce the same uh, situation. Now there is uh, another guy, McCracken, Dr. McCracken, who sees it uh, much like what the two of us do but uh, his interpretation is strongly focused on just on the nation of Israel and, um, and focused on the fact that uh, these events seem to point to Israel more than anywhere else. But I disagree with him because the sign was given to John in the New Testament. I think it applies uh, a lot to the United States, especially since it was anchored with a great a solar eclipse of 2017 that was like 32 days earlier. So I disagree with him in that area. And that is why I'm warning you, because this applies to everybody, to America especially. And uh, we are uh, the protector of Israel in a sense. And um, we have to be aware that China, all our enemies, are after us and we have a lot of internal enemies. This is a warning. This college thing is just a warning of things that are going to be much worse. And so keep in prayer and ask God to help uh, our leaders 
Um, some people believe that, uh, you know, Trump will be our next president. But I don't think he's going to succeed either, folks. This is something that God has arranged. And uh, Trump is surrounded by a lot of sevens. If you go back and read about him, you'll realize, wow, he is uh, a very interesting individual. So keep focused. Uh, God says that we need to be of sound mind and to be alert so that we can pray. It doesn't say be of sound mind and alert so that you can run or so that you can play sports or this, that you can uh, talk with your friends about whatever else he's talking about so that you can pray. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, I will say shalom and farewell for now.